Um, Welcome back to my life in Taiwan and welcome to the year of the pig. Yes, whether you are watching from here on your holiday time in Taiwan or some other country around the world, I want to wish you a very happy Lunar New Year. And I hope that the year of the pig brings you all of the wealth, happiness, prosperity or whatever you are searching for in life. Let's have an awesome year of the pig. Now, seeing that it is such a festive season, I've decided to pop up here into your YouTube feed and share with you some of the different traditions, cultures and customs that Taiwanese people like to take part in at this time of year, as well as sharing with you those customs from my perspective or the perspective of a general foreigner living here and how we as foreigners can maximize our cultural experience by taking part in such events because this time of year may be the happiest time of year for Taiwanese people but some foreigners maybe that come here for a year or two and don't pick up so many local friends might find this time a little bit lonely therefore I'm going to use this opportunity to help foreigners learn all about the cultures and customs as well as getting involved and as I said maximizing cultural experience. So on to the first tradition of Lunar New Year here in Taiwan which should be pretty evident from my change of clothing and that is wearing red. You see red is the color of luck, wealth, prosperity and general happiness in the culture here. Therefore wearing red symbolizes luck and prosperity and if you are invited to a local's house and you show up wearing your brightest red t-shirt or sweater, then that will just promote a general feeling of happiness and I'm sure you will receive lots of compliments on your festive choice of clothing. Also, if you're not invited to anybody's house and you just go shopping alone as a foreigner in the street, then people will definitely notice you. People will really feel that you are taking part in the festivities of the season and will ingratiate you more into the local culture. Therefore, tip number one, wear something red. So as well as red clothing, there's also another red item which is incredibly significant during this time of year here in Taiwan. And that's this, a red envelope. Also known in Chinese as a hongbao, it's used for giving money from older generations down to younger generations in a family, or if you're lucky like me, for bosses to reward their hardworking employees. Now, many people like to make a comparison between Lunar New Year and the feeling of Christmas back in the West, and somewhat to some degree that can be true, but where we have gifts and gift exchanges in the West, here in Taiwan, it's all about the red envelopes. Grandparents, uncles, mothers and fathers will give to their children. And sometimes if a cousin or brother or sister is working, then they also have to give to their nephews, nieces, younger brothers and sisters. As a foreigner here, you're probably going to receive at least one from your boss if you're doing a good job or maybe from a good friend. But what I like to do I like to put some foreign currency, some British or South African currency into a red envelope and give it to some of my closer Taiwanese friends. Just a way to show my appreciation of their friendship and not sure if it causes any offense as the money is pretty useless to them. But if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I love mixing the two cultures. So on to the third tradition of Lunar New Year here in Taiwan and it's probably the one that I hate the most, spring cleaning. But it is very important to rid your house or workplace of any junk or clutter that you have accumulated over the past year in order to make room for new luck or money to come into your house or business. But it's very important that you get this job finished before the Lunar New Year arrives because if you do it within the first few days of the new year, then you risk 
throwing out some of that new luck or money that has already arrived. As a foreigner here, whether you work as a teacher in a school or in some office or some other company, I think this activity is a great way to let your coworkers feel that you are part of the team and get involved and take their culture seriously. If you have your own classroom, give it a clean before the winter break, or if you're in an office, just give your desk a bit of a tidy. I personally absolutely hate cleaning, but I always take part in this event just to show a little bit of camaraderie with my coworkers. So from what is my least favorite of the Taiwanese Lunar New Year traditions onto what is undoubtedly my absolute favorite, and that's the gambling, the mahjong, the dice, and the blackjack. Now, although strictly speaking, gambling is illegal here in Taiwan, there is a law that states that a house playing for money on one table is permissible. Therefore, you tend to find with large groups of families under one roof for several days at a time, they will get around to opening up a table to gamble, have a few beers, and generally enjoy the festivities of the season together. Now, as a foreigner, if you find yourself at one of these tables, then try not to be too aggressive. Don't throw your money around too much. And if you win, accept it gracefully. And if you lose, just try your best not to smash the place up. So on to number five, and talking of families being under one roof, the final tradition I'm gonna talk about is the big New Year's Eve family meal, usually held on Chu Shi, the day before New Year's Day, also known as Chu Yi. This is the event or the tradition or the custom that really reminds me most of a traditional Christmas dinner back in England. And although in 11 years, I've never actually been to a friend's home for this important meal, I can truly feel the significance and the importance of it through watching people's videos on Facebook, their photos, and of course, when people tell me about it in their stories. Shishi, thank you. Somebody's just handed me a, a black tea. Awesome. Um. Yes, how nice is that? But yes, back to that New Year's Eve family meal. And traditionally, if you are married, then your family will go back to the husband's parents' home. Uh, if you're single, then you'll just go back to your own parents' home. There'll be piles and piles of food, uh, beers, expensive whiskeys, grandparents and parents usually pushing single adults to get married, married couples pushing them to have babies, uh, uncles falling asleep after eating too much food, and dads telling bad jokes. Pretty much what you can expect from a standard Christmas meal back in England. And just to go back to what I said earlier about never actually having been to one of these meals, almost every year I am invited by friends or co-workers and colleagues to go to their family home. And I'm not sure if this is the right thing to have done, but I've always uh, refused politely. Um, I just feel like it's not the right thing for me to go. Uh, maybe you can tell me in the comment section if I'm doing the wrong thing. But I would also feel very weird in England if I was to go to one of my friends' houses for their Christmas family dinner, even if that was one of my best closest friends. It's just a little bit weird. Therefore, I've always refused because I don't want to be a distraction or some elephant in the room that people will be thinking, why is this weird random foreigner here? Of course, the coworker or friend that's invited me knows me well, but this is their family time. As I said, let me know in the comment section, should I accept, and maybe next year I'll think twice about it. But anyway, probably I'm Shanghai Door. So that pretty much brings me to the end of this video and my top five Taiwanese Lunar New Year traditions. I'm absolutely certain that there's a multitude of others that I've missed out. Therefore, if you are Taiwanese and you know of something that you want to share, something you want to tell the world that we do here in Taiwan, on Lunar New Year, then put it in the comment section down below and allow the world to see what we get up to at this extra special time of year. I think that's pretty much it. If you haven't already subscribed, then please do so. I'm gonna be making a lot more videos over this next week about Lunar New Year, some of the foods and things that we get up to. Subscribe, share, like, tell your friends, tell your dog. I'll see you next time in my life in Taiwan. Xin Um.